We are live. I've run out of water. Look, it's going. Finished now. It's fine. We're nearly finished. Last one. That is it. It is twenty two eleven at night on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Don't want to keep talking about it, but you know, don't like working weekends. Yeah, you might have to. Yeah. Deal with it. All eight nights. Um. Anyway. We've well, done a mic. Who are we? Yeah, that's it. We've done a mic. We're here to help you with your online fitness business. Pinky perky or whatever. In any way we can. Bill and Ben. Pinky the brain. Brain. Yeah. On the neck. Brain. Paul and, brain. Paul and Barry. Barry and Paul. Who were they? Little and large. Holland and large. Holland and lardy? No. Other one. It's two. Laurel and Hardy. doesn't work if it's two of you. That doesn't count. Doesn't. No. no. You can't do that. Can't do that. No. Can't. can't. Okay. Well, take away everybody else within your business then, if it doesn't count, that you're taking revenue from. Ooh, and, doesn't, and, doesn't, and, okay. doesn't count. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Uh, today we're talking about. Um, well, Mike's gonna say his thing first. What? Oh, just fucking follow it. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna talk about uh, copywriting and why the lost art of learning copywriting um, will actually make you a better video content creator as well. Um, so, obviously, there's been a big push on social media recently. Obviously, everyone's going towards video and video's king and all this sort of stuff on social media, which it is. Of course it is from a, you know, from an attention standpoint, everyone's um, attention spans are getting shorter and smaller and all this sort of jazz, right? And people are saying, oh, people don't read long emails anymore. They don't read sales pages. They don't read stuff. They don't read blogs. No, they don't read shit stuff, but they do read good stuff. Um, and I think it's important that we talk about why learning copywriting, understanding copywriting principles is key to you being a very, very good content creator um, going forward. Um, and the reasons for that are thus. Thus. Do people still say that these days? Probably not. Shakespeare. That won't come from the captions, will it? No. Um, the first one is that one of the key things around copywriting is understanding who you're writing for. So a lot of copywriters will have to research the audience that they're writing for. They'll have to research their product. They'll have to understand the pain points of the customer and all this sort of stuff. And then they'll bring those out in the copy of, of what they're writing, whether it's emails or sales pages and stuff like that. And it's something that coaches just don't do. Coaches, in my opinion, do not understand their target market whatsoever. They don't understand the audience, don't understand what people struggle with in fitness. They just want to post what they want to post about fitness and like, because they're big and strong and they love fitness. So they just post about it from their point of view. And they forget to think about the person watching it and what they want to get out of it and their pain points and what they struggle with. And they just kind of make self-serving content, I feel. Yeah. Coaches are clueless. Clueless. They are. Just get them to copy. Just help them then. What? Maybe help them. No. No, no, no. Don't no, help no, them. No, no, no. Watch this. This will help you. So straight away, make you better content. Yeah. Content. So um, it's, the same, it's the same with writing, isn't it? It's the same with writing as it is with 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 video, it, yeah. with anything. It, it stems from it stems from coaches a not knowing who they're talking to, b not knowing who they are. Like because that's it sounds. Coaches don't know who they are. You almost you also need to understand who you appeal to. Um, if you're six stone wet through, um, <laughs> look like that. You you're you're not going to be comp- uh, coaching IFBB pros. Probability wise, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna be doing that. So forget about that. Find someone who you are gonna appeal to, because there is also that. Remember that you need to think about. Okay, you've got this ideal client that you would love to work with, but think about just be honest with who's actually gonna work with you. So there's the I actually had a consult today with a guy who is in good nick, young guy though, twenty three, um, and we spoke about um, ultra flex. And he came to the realization through the talk that we had that oh shit, no one in Ultraflex is actually going to work want to work with me because they're all going to go with X, Y, and Z because they've got so much more social proof. And why wouldn't you? Um, I was like, yeah. So your demographic might be from Pure Gym, let's just say, um, but they don't see any results in Pure Gym. They don't have a structured training program. Everyone else around them is not in too good a shape either. They might have, uh, you know, lower finances to devote to, to, to coaching and so on so forth. That he re- he realised that okay, actually I could have some appeal there because he does look he does look pretty good and so on and so forth, right? So again, it's about knowing who you appeal to, and then how you're going to talk to that audience in their language, um, and coaches just can't get that into their thick heads <laughs> um, yeah. they just can't grasp it for whatever reason and they just like you say make content about tips 
And all that tries to impress other online coaches still. I saw some today about talking about what they do, what their service provides and what it offers. And it just read off like this spiel of just like them trying to fucking wank off another MNU coach at the MNU conference. It was like, come on, like we're better than that now. Like we are able to, if we're smart enough, we're able to speak people in their language. And I think that's one thing that coaches just, just can't do is when I read some of these captions on some of these posts, it's it, the mind boggles. Honestly, it's like you need a fucking science degree to understand half of it. And look, if you want to appeal to science geeks, then great. This person I know wasn't. Um, but some people do it very, very well, where they do speak to their demographic in their language and they use big words because their their audience want to, want to use them. Um, but it, you've got to remember is that fitness is such a complex topic for so many people. And I feel like coaches just try and make it more complex, make it sound even more like alien to these people than than they than making it sound simple. G U L T four. Galt. Always yeah, about the Galt. Always about the Galt four, isn't it? Yeah. G U L T four. Always. Yeah. Um creating a demand. See so create always create a demand. Always create a demand for it. Um so yeah, so I think that's the that's the first part of it is that when you do copywriting and you and you, you know you learn to copyright properly, you, you understand the principles of research and who you're writing for and ultimately you're writing something for someone else, not for yourself. You're writing it for them. So the amount of copywriting I see the amount of people I write who, who I see they're writing and it's all, I did this, I'm this, I'm that, my thing does this, my service does this, my, you know, it's all about, it's like, well, yeah, well, don't give a shit now. Do you know what I mean? You just turn off. So that's the first point. Um, the second point of it is that, is, is, is the thing that I find really odd with, if I was to say to someone, right, how would you get good at writing? They would go, well, practice. Whereas when people go on video, they go, oh, I'm just not very good on video but they don't do the practice bit of it. They just accept that they're not very good at it. And with copywriting, one of the huge parts of writing emails and writing content and, and stuff like that and scripts is that you basically practice. You learn what works, what doesn't work. And people don't have the same thing with video. They feel like they can't practice video for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but writing things out and writing scripts and writing things in that structure and that order that you need when it comes to copywriting, which is things the same as we do on videos with hooks, telling a story throughout, having open loops, closing loops, CTAs, is exactly the same video. And sometimes when people practice writing it out and seeing a structure of it written out, they're able to then better um, understand how that then applies to video and then turn that into a video. And I actually think that a lot of the a lot of good video creators would be very good writers because they would just have to write as they would create a video. <laughs> and if you're struggling with with video and being good on video, I encourage you to get better at writing because I think it's a skill that you can practice more often in more places that seems less scary. Um, and I think you'll be very, very good then at translating that over into video um, because you'll have that practice, you know, element of understanding, taking someone through a journey mm -hmm. with copywriting. So with copywriting, a lot of people, they take you through a journey of, right, here's your problem. Here's how it makes you feel. Here's the problem with that. Here's how I can make you feel using my thing that I do that's unique, that's only the only I do, and here's how you can get hold of that. And it's basically taking them through, through this whole story of structure. And all your videos should kind of be doing that in a roundabout way, not often as, as big as that or as long as that, but it is important to remember that you are trying to promote essentially all the time your product or your service. And ultimately that's what copywriting is all about. Do you know when you're having a conversation with... Um someone that's a good storyteller, like me. Um, Once upon a time, always starts with that. Always that. Right. No, but like, do you know, I, I would consider myself a good storyteller. Do you know when I tell the same same stories all the yeah, time, right? Yeah, yeah. And I know where the, the pauses are. I know where I need to repeat stuff. Like, I know how to keep people engaged as I'm telling the story. Mm. So that's how your content should be. So like, you will know whether you're a good storyteller or not just by talking to your friends. If you're the type of person that can tell... Like, we all know these people, he can tell a story, he's got a fucking story or two. Like, I know people who can who can capture people just in a, even a small setting. And that's what you're looking for with any content, be it video or copy, is that the ability and the art of telling a story and holding the audience and knowing what's coming in the next line. Again, like Sam, he was really good at telling, remember when he was telling us his sto telling the story in the McDonald's yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he would pause at the right time and as we were laughing, he'd then kick in again and make another joke. And it, it, it makes you want to hear more because of 
everything that is done is timed right. There's use for it. There's value in it. Whereas coaches write guff mm-hmm. or film guff. They'll film a reel. 80% of it should just be taken out. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't even need to be in there. It's just... It's 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 over explanation or it's this this feel like this feeling that you need to to pack in everything into that in, in into that sixty seconds, whereas it, it doesn't. What you need to be doing for your audience, and again, even the algorithm would would tell you this that you need to get the the larger watch times. Um, you you need more people to view it. So getting good at storytelling, and the easiest way is written word because it is less scary it is less invasive it is less camera in your face shit now keep us you know um captivated you can edit it easier than waiting until you filmed it and then not knowing what to chop out you can delete go back copy cut paste change things around think oh that's a shit line this doesn't work it is easier to do that and when you get good at writing because that's how i first started doing it so when i first started mh fitness so good um good name yeah um i started writing daily emails so i think i think i would i would have got on camera roughly the same time i think camera was just a bit after that but at the time i was i was i was you know with a girl who was on camera a lot she's a youtuber and i used to really cringe well and like shudder at any thought of the camera being around so i really didn't like that, but I did like get my personality over because I listened to a lot of Paul Mort stuff back in the day and it was daily email. So I would write and I would learn to, to make things good. I've never really done any formal copywriting and I am brilliant at it. Um, <laughs> so I've never really modest done it. With it too. So, yeah, 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 you're modest. So a star in English at school. Yeah. So yeah. even from my background, yeah. who'd have yeah. thought that? Um, prodigy so oh is it is he a genius oh he's taking all the boxes um so not my words um mr Hagues. no it wasn't he was boring um no but learning to write and get better at writing and knowing the the points that you want to make and make it punchier because on um written word you have to make you have to turn the volume up more because it is harder to keep people's attention because writing isn't as interactive uh, and as easy to to make chops and changes or do a funny skit or to have something in your hand whilst you're fucking juggling trying to keep someone's attention or whatever. It is harder. And if you get good at doing that, you will by definition be good at doing the video stuff because you will know the stuff that works, the stuff that you edit out and the stuff that you are keeping in. Yeah, and, and that's the only reason Mike got good on video. <clears throat> it's because he was good on daily emails. So there you go. That's it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need a bit of water. There we go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But basically, I think it's just really important that you spend a lot of time. If it's if your content creation is something you struggle with when it comes to video, when it comes to knowing what to say in front of camera, knowing how to practical to tips things. for copywriting. For copywriting, one of the best things you can do is read everything out loud. So when you've written your email, mm-hmm. read it out loud, and you will see how someone else is going to read it because. When you read it, you'll read it quickly. You'll skim words, you'll miss words because you've written it. One of the best things you can do is read it out loud because you'll see where those pauses should be. You'll see where the pauses currently are. You'll see if you need to add pauses. You'll see if there's any jumps in your copy that just don't make any sense that you've just kind of go, well, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense to go from that line to the next one. There needs to be a, a transition, I used, they used to call it. So I was in Mike Samuel's um, copyright mentoring group um, with Jamie is his business partner and Jamie used to call them lumpy transitions it's where you kind of create a line and then the line underneath it just doesn't bear any relevance to the one above it you need to have a segue you need to have a reason that you then move the conversation to something else which again a lot of storytellers do very very well is it's there's a reason they tell you something but then they segue it into the actual meat and bones of of what you're talking about so number one is to read it out loud and have a mixture of like short sentences long ones all this sort of stuff Number two is get on other copywriters' email lists to learn how other people are doing it. Don't copy the emails because it's just fucking stupid. Same as copying video content, it's stupid. Is see how other people write. See what they're doing, how they're getting their personality across, their voice, their tone, all that sort of stuff across. Um, And then the third one, I would say is write as often as you can. So you said you got good from writing daily emails. There's a reason you'll get better doing that than writing once a week. Even if you don't send them, still write them. Because you'll only you'll have a back catalog of loads of content, number one. But number two is that you'll get very, very good very, very quickly at writing and seeing how that's going to translate over then to understanding how that will work on video as well. Um, so they're the things that I would do 
if I was you. Um, I would write how you say it. That's one yeah, of my Yeah, write tips. how you say it. Yeah, is a big So one. if, you know, how you would speak it, just, just write it. Even with, for me, I would just use the same words that I would use just in normal language. One that I stole off uh, Chris, Savage Scholar, on Instagram, um, is when you're reading it through, the first really good line that you get to that you like, mm-hmm. delete everything above that and start from that good line because that's what's <coughs> going to hook their yeah, attention. You usually start with a guff, don't you? Like, today I want to talk you set to you it about up. This. You yeah. think you're setting it up, but you're yeah. not. You yeah. should just go straight in, um, no loop. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing as well I would say is um, use uh, the website called the Hemingway app. Essentially, when you're writing emails, you want to dumb it down as much as possible. Like people's reading age is very, very low. You want to try and make it as easy to read as possible rather than more complicated. So you might think it sounds great when you make it sound more complicated. Use big words. It makes it harder to read. People switch off quicker. So again, shorter sentences, smaller blocks of text, make it easier to read for people. Again, like we said, if you can use five words instead of using 10 words, use five. Every single word counts when it comes to writing emails and copy. Um, but that's enough after this video. But, um, Three minutes to Turkish myself. Ooh, don't know. Two minutes Turkish. No idea what that's off. Who knows what that's off? Comment below. Comment below. They're gonna comment below. Snatch. Uh, <laughs> I ruined okay. it. Right. That's pointless. That's it. That's it. We're done. So yeah, go write some content. It's better for you than just always relying on video. Like, share, members group. Cheers. Bye. Join. <laughs>